Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate your great work on behalf of our country and uh, the work that you've done, particularly in the theaters that you have covered. Uh, General Scar Scarpati, uh, I want to come back to uh, one of the points that uh, was raised by my colleague, uh, Senator Gillibrand, about uh, soft targets in terms of cyber. How vulnerable do you think those targets are in the area under your command? Well, I think that, first of all, um, I'm confident in our military systems and my command and control systems. We red team that. We exercise it. Um, I think we have a good defense, but the problem with cyber is it's very dynamic. It changes every day. So it's something we have to stay focused on. I'm concerned about, um, obviously, the, um, the civilian um, cyber network that you know we're we're all connected to and uh, has an influence on us uh, militarily as well on the peninsula and so that requires uh, rock us work and it requires uh, rock work with their uh, civilian counterparts as well is there uh in your view any action we could take with respect to north korea that would deter their invasive action such as we saw with Sony, such as we have seen uh, and you see in your theater? Yes, I believe there are some actions we could take. I'd, I'd prefer to provide that to you in a, in a either closed session or, um, or a classified document. I, I understand that point. Without speaking to them specifically, uh, have you made recommendations about them and do you think there is the prospect of imminent action that will widen and increase the effectiveness of what we're doing? Well, in terms of the recommendations, we're, we're actively discussing uh, some operations in terms of their effectiveness, et cetera. But, um, you know, that's, that's presently just a part of planning. Uh, Admiral Harris, uh, in terms of the uh, submarine capable capability of this country, uh, we face no shortage of challenges in the Asia Pacific. And uh, we also, I think uh, many of us have no doubt about the importance of submarines. Uh, and I know that my colleague, Senator Ayat, asked you uh, about the uh, sufficiency of the funding that we have in prospect. Uh, if you were to talk to the American public, how would you put it so that they could understand the importance of our submarine capability in the Asia Pacific? Senator, I would say that the submarine force has been our principal asymmetric advantage over all the adversaries we faced in the 100 years of the submarine service. Uh, and. Uh, it is such an asymmetric advantage that every country who can builds their own submarine force. Those countries that are building those submarine forces are building some very capable uh, uh, vessels. Uh, the, the Russians, the Chinese uh, lead that effort. The Japanese uh, make a great submarine. Uh, but I, I'm concerned about the Russian and Chinese submarines as they increase in their capability. Uh, the Russian submarine force, in my opinion, did not take a hiatus when the Cold War ended. And so now we have the Dolgoruki class SSBN. Uh, their, their newest ballistic missile submarine is now uh, in their Far East fleet uh, in the Pacific. Uh, the Chinese are building JIN, J-I-N, JIN class SSBNs. Uh, which will, uh, which has the capability, if mated with the right missile, to threaten the entire United States. So these are these are submarines that we have to, we must place them, keep them at risk whenever they're underway and on patrol. Uh, and and I face a submarine shortage in the Pacific. My requirements are not being met, uh, and that's that's a function of numbers and, and global demand. I, I get all that, uh, but. Uh, uh, I, I'm also uh, worried about that uh, delta, that shortfall between 
requirement uh, and uh, presence. Thank you.